the topic of discussion in the vascular pathology is the vascular ectasias. First let us discuss what exactly is the meaning of the ectasia. Ectasia is a term which is often used to explain any local dilation of a structure. So any local dilation of a structure is called as ectasia. But we have another term called as telangiectasia. So the telangiectasia is used to describe a permanent dilation of pre-existing small vessels. So whenever we describe about the permanent dilation of pre-existing small vessels, it is called as telangiectasia. Small vessels means we call them as capillaries, venules and arterioles usually of the skin as well as mucous membranes or the affected regions. So these telangiectasias at these anatomical locations form a discrete red lesions. So these lesions what you are seeing on the screen that can be congenital or acquired and remember that these are not at all true neoplasms. So we have different types of vascular ectasias over here and we are going to discuss each and every one in detail and the first one is called as the nevus flamius. This nevus flamius is often termed as a birth mark and remember that it is the most common form of the vascular ectasia. This is what you will see in the exam. What is the most common form of vascular ectasia is nevus flamius which is also called as the birth mark. So when we describe about its color it varies from light pink to deep purple in color and these lesions are often flat and the usual anatomical areas are the head and neck regions and composed mainly of the dilated vessels and these lesions regress spontaneously. So this is what you need to know about nevus flamius which is also called as the birth mark, the port wine stain. The port wine stain is a special form of nevus or we can say nevus flamius. They tend to grow during childhood, especially the thickness of the skin surface is usually increased and like others what we studied, they won't fade usually with the time and these lesions occurring in the distribution of the trigeminal nerve are indicated with the Sturge Weber syndrome. And this uncommon congenital disorder is usually associated with the facial port vein nevi as well as ipsilateral venous angiomas in the cortical leptomeninges, mental retardation, seizures, hemiplegia, and radiologic opacities of the skull are more commonly seen. If the facial telangiectasias are large, especially in a child with mental deficiencies, that may indicate the presence of additional vascular malformations. This is what we need to know about these kind of lesions. But some cases have an ipsilateral malformations of the pia mater vessels overlying the occipital as well as parietal lobes and these vessels can bleed and produce a subarachnoid hemorrhage also. After discussing about the nevus flamius, the next one is the salmon patch. It is also known as the stork bite, angelicus. Nevius simplex and erythema nuci is the most common vascular lesion which is more commonly seen in infants of all the races and comprises about 20 to 60 percent of the vascular ectasias. And if we talk about the usual anatomical locations, these are most often located at the nape of the neck and occiput are the most common anatomical sites. But the facial, scalp, 
and sacral lesions are also seen in vast majority of the cases. And when we discuss about the least common sites like the trunk and limbs are less often affected. So there may be multiple lesions also but usually the lesions are not multiple but sometimes in rare cases you will also see the multiple lesions. Actually these lesions enlarge in proportion to that of the child growth. As child grows these lesions also grow along with the age. And when we specifically discuss about the facial lesions, these facial lesions initially during birth are very bright pink in color but generally fade within one to two years after birth whereas those of other sites especially like nuchal persist into adulthood. These are the important points for you to know about these kind of lesions. There is a variant of the salmon patch is known as the butterfly shaped mark we can say that can occur in the sacral region. So the sacral lesions may be associated with uh, uh, other conditions like uh, lipomeningocele is the one of the most common condition which is associated with the lesions at the sacral region. Usually when another skin defect occurs these are more commonly associated with this butterfly kind of lesions at the sacral lesion like a dimple, sinus, swelling, excess hair or nevus or skin aplasia. Spider telangiectasias. The spider telangiectasias are also called as the arterial spiders. So these are also non-neoplastic vascular lesions and they often manifest as radial often pulsatile arrays of the dilated subcutaneous arteries or arterioles and the legs of the spider we can say. About the central core the spider body that blanch with the pressure and these commonly present on the face, neck or upper chest and most commonly are associated with hyperestrogenic states especially seen in pregnant women or patients with cirrhosis. And we have special type of telangiectasia is called as hereditary hemorrhagic telangiectasia which is also called as osler weber rendu disease. So this osler weber rendu disease is an autosomal dominant disorder usually caused by the mutations in the genes that encodes the components of the transforming growth factor beta signaling pathway in endothelial cells. So these are the malformations mainly composed of the dilated capillaries and veins that present at birth and they are widely dispersed over the skin as well as the oral mucous membranes as well as in the respiratory, gastrointestinal as well as in the urinary tract. These lesions can spontaneously rupture thereby causing severe epistaxis called as nosebleed and also they can cause gastrointestinal bleed or hematuria.